we'll be taking a look at exercise 2.1.10, which is on page 59 of Basic Analysis 1, Introduction to Real Analysis, Volume 1 by Jiri Labelle. So the problem is to show that the sequence n plus 1 over n is monotone and bounded, then use theorem 2.1.10 to find the limit. So the first thing we need to do as directed is show that the sequence is monotone. Now on definition 2.1.9 from page 55, we see that a sequence is monotone increasing if x sub n is less than or equal to x sub n plus 1. In other words, the next term is bigger than or equal to the one before it for every n, or monotone decreasing if the reverse holds x n plus 1 is less than or equal to n, so that every term is less than or equal to the one before it. And it is called monotone if either one of those conditions holds. So loosely put, if the terms are not getting smaller, then they're either staying the same or getting bigger, so the sequence is monotone increasing, while if they do not get bigger, then they're either staying the same or getting smaller, that's called monotone decreasing. So to show that the sequence we're given is monotone, we're either going to show it is monotone increasing or that it is monotone decreasing. So is this sequence monotone increasing or is it monotone decreasing? Are the terms not getting bigger, possibly getting smaller, or are the terms not getting smaller, possibly getting bigger? So let's just compute a few terms and see what's going on. x sub 1 is 1 plus 1 over 2, which is 2. x sub 2 is 2 plus 1 over 2, or 3 halves. We can convert this to a decimal to more easily see if it's bigger or smaller than 2. 1.5 is definitely smaller. Similarly, x sub 3 is even smaller, and x sub 4 is smaller still. So by computing a few terms, it certainly appears that the terms are getting smaller. Now that is not a proof, all we've done is compute a few terms. But we're going to show that the sequence is monotone decreasing. So let's show that the given sequence is monotone decreasing. So let n be any natural number. Remember, to show that it's monotone decreasing, we need to show that x sub n is bigger than or equal to xn plus 1, or equivalently, the difference xn minus xn plus 1 is bigger than or equal to 0, and we need to show this holds for every natural number. So pick n to be an arbitrary natural number. We're not picking a specific one, we're just letting it be n. We simply compute that xn minus xn plus 1, well, x sub n is n plus 1 over n, but in x sub n plus 1, we increase all of the indices, and so we get n plus 1 plus 1, or n plus 2, over n plus 1. Now we have a difference of two fractions, n plus 1 over n minus n plus 2 over n plus 1. You can check the algebra here, this is just some fraction manipulation, but once you cancel out the relevant terms in the numerator, we get 1 over n times n plus 1, which is definitely bigger than or equal to 0. It's actually strictly bigger than 0. But all we needed to show was that xn minus xn plus 1 is bigger than or equal to 0, and now we've done that. So this little claim is proved. Our sequence is monotone decreasing. So we've shown the sequence is monotone decreasing, which means it's monotone. As directed, the next thing to show is that it is bounded. So on page 51, you can find definition 2.1.1. A sequence is bounded if there is a real number b so that the absolute value of every term of the sequence is less than or equal to b. All we have to do is find an appropriate choice of b which will work for our sequence. So we claim that the absolute value of every x sub n is in fact less than or equal to 2. Now where did 2 come from? Well, let's just verify that it works. Since every choice of n is positive, x sub n, which is n plus 1 over n, is also positive. So referring to the definition of absolute value on page 36, since every term of the sequence is positive, the absolute value does not change the value. The absolute value of xn simply is equal to xn, which is n plus 1 over n. Now since every natural number, n, satisfies that n is bigger than or equal to 1, n plus 1 is less than or equal to n plus n, simply by adding n to the inequality stated. Now n plus n is just 2n, so n plus 1 is less than or equal to 2n, and by dividing n to the other side, we see that n plus 1 over n is less than or equal to 2. This holds for every natural number n, which is what we needed to show, so this claim is also proved. Our sequence is bounded. So we've shown that the sequence we were given is monotone decreasing and bounded. The next thing is to apply theorem 2.1.10. So on page 55, we see that a monotone sequence is bounded if and only if it is convergent. Since our monotone sequence is bounded, it is also therefore convergent. However, as part of this theorem, if the sequence is monotone increasing and bounded, then the limit of the sequence is the supremum of the set of values the sequence takes, whereas if the sequence is monotone decreasing and bounded, then the limit of the sequence is the infimum of the set of values that it takes. 
So our sequence we showed to be monotone decreasing. So the theorem tells us that the limit of the sequence must be equal to the infimum of the set of values. What's an infimum? Well, look on page 24. The infimum of a set of values, we need to find a real number L so that it is a lower bound. So for L to be a lower bound of this set, then every X sub N must be bigger than or equal to L. However, to be the infimum, you more specifically need L to be the greatest lower bound. Any number L prime, which is bigger than L, must not be a lower bound, meaning there is some element of the sequence X sub N, which is smaller than L prime. Let's look at the terms of our sequence. They're given by N plus one over N, which is one plus one over N. Intuitively, we can understand that since n is getting bigger and bigger, the 1 over n is getting smaller and smaller, collapsing to 0. Note that's not a proof, we're just working with a little bit of intuition here. So since 1 over n is going to 0, 1 plus it should just be going to 1. So we have a good intuitive guess that the infimum of this set, in other words, the limit of the sequence, should be 1. So let's prove that claim. The infimum of the set of values n plus 1 over n is equal to 1. So the first thing we need to do in establishing something as an infimum is to show that that number is a lower bound. Remember, what we need to show to show a number as a lower bound is that every element of the set or every term of the sequence is bigger than or equal to that number. So we need to show that n plus 1 over n is always bigger than or equal to 1. Now let n be an arbitrary natural number. X sub n is n plus 1 over n, which as discussed is equal to 1 plus 1 over n. Since n is positive, 1 over n is positive as well. So X sub n is 1 plus a positive number, which is bigger than or equal to 1. It's actually strictly bigger, but that doesn't matter. We just needed to show that every n plus 1 over n is bigger than or equal to 1. Therefore, 1 is a lower bound. But to show that 1 is the infimum, we don't just need to show it's a lower bound. We need to show that any number bigger than 1 is not a lower bound. So let y be an arbitrary number larger than 1. If it's larger than 1, y must be equal to 1 plus epsilon, where epsilon is a positive number. To be larger than 1, you have added something to 1. Now by corollary 1.2.5 on page 32, which states that the infimum of 1 over n is 0, since epsilon is bigger than this infimum, it is not a lower bound on the set of 1 over n. So there must be an n so that 1 over n is less than whatever this epsilon is. Now, since 1 over n is less than epsilon, 1 plus 1 over n is less than 1 plus epsilon, which was y. So it does not matter what y is. If it's bigger than 1, we are now able to find some choice of n so that n plus 1 over n is less than y. In other words, every y I could possibly pick bigger than 1 fails to be a lower bound on the set of values of this sequence. So we've shown two things about the number one. First, it is a lower bound of our sequence. Every element of this sequence is bigger than or equal to one. But any number I could pick bigger than one fails to have that property and therefore is not a lower bound. Therefore, by definition, one is the infimum of our sequence. And theorem 2.1.10 tells us that since we have a bounded monotone decreasing sequence, the infimum is equal to the limit. So we can now state that the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus one over n is flat out equal to one, and the proof is complete.